Hey guys, um, I know this lab is being released before 5.4, uh, the lab before it, but I felt like this was a very important one to get out as soon as possible because this lab, it's it's just a, a beast. It's a, it's a monster to try and tackle. I don't think the book does a very good job at all explaining this. And there is a section for nested loops, but it's... It doesn't seem like this problem, like there's really a good help in the book to tackle something like this. Um, that's just my opinion. I, I, I really think they dropped the ball on that. So um, you could spend hours really racking your brain trying to get this done. Uh, so I haven't really changed anything just so we could get a good idea of how this is done. It's just that complicated that I felt it necessary to just keep everything kind of the same. Um, I do have another example down here too, but we'll start with what they actually would probably want. And what we're being asked is to have a program that prints the letter E using these little stars. They're called an asterisk. And uh, I'll say star from now on because it's just easier to say. Uh, so. Starting up here in the declaration section, we've got two constants here, one for our columns and one for our rows. So we can declare how many columns and rows we have there. And then we have two variables for row and column. And that's, you know, th those are just going to be used in our, in our loops. And so when we look down here, we're going to say, we're going to start off with a for loop. And, um, the problem wants you to have a nested loop, and it also wants you to have what it says a nested if statement to determine when to um, print a star or when to print a space. I don't really think it's possible just to have a if statement, a nested if statement. I think you need more than that. Maybe I'm wrong if, if that's the case and you know that it can be done with just one, uh, then do that but it just doesn't seem possible to me. Um, so this is what we have here. So we're going to start off with this for loop, and we're going to start with rows equaling 1. Um, as long as the rows are less than or equal to number down, so the number of rows, 5, then we're going to enter the for loop. And when we come back, it's going to change that, you know, row plus plus is going to change row to 2. But Starting off, we're just going to have that, so it's 1, so we go in here and we have this nested if statement here, our first one. And that, right there, we're using the modulus operator here, so we're just checking to see if this variable divided by 2 will have a remainder. And if it does, it will not be equal to 0, so this would be a false statement. So if row, which is 1, divided by 2 has a remainder, which it does, then we really can't do anything with this. So we're not going to print one of these stars here. We're just going to move on. Now we're going to check for our columns. So we've got this nested loop right here, nested for, for loop. And we're going to start off with columns equaling the 1. And as long as they don't go over 5, or 3, sorry, as long as the columns do not go over 3, then we're going to do whatever's in here. And when we come back around, we're going to add 1 to 1 to be 2. So let's go ahead inside of the for loop here. We've got an if statement. Same, you know, as above here, row modulus 2 is equal to 0. And so 1 modulus 2 does not have a remainder. Or it does. Or, you know, it does not equal 0, basically. So this statement right here is false. We will not be printing spaces. So else print that. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And now we stay in the for loop because we haven't gone over 3 yet. Columns is now equal to 2. So we're going to stay in the for loop and we're going to go back. The statement is still false. So we're going to print another one. Stay in the for loop. It's 3. That still meets the requirements. So we're going to go back in. Statement still false. Print another one. And these are all side by side. Now we go back and check again, column is equal to 4, it's not meeting that requirement anymore, so we do not go back into the for loop again, we exit it, 
in line. So we've got three stars side by side. Now we're going to go back. We're on the new line. We're on line two, row two. So we check is two less than or equal to number down? Yes. So we're going to go in here. Now we check for this. If row modulus two is equal to zero, two divided by two would not have a remainder. So that's a true statement. We're going to do this. We're going to print that star there and we're going to move on. So, so far row number two has one star in it. And now we're going to be in column one again. So this starts all over again. In column one, we're going to check row modulus two. So remember, we're on row two, by the way. That does not have a remainder, so this is a true statement. We're going to print a space. Go back again, we're in column two. Print a space again, column three, print a space again. And then we'll inline, and go to row number three. You can see how this is going. This is just, you know, going through the loops and outputting what's necessary. So row three, we would not do that. We go into here, we print three stars, in line, row four, we print one, print three spaces, in line, five, you know, so on and so forth. So it's it's just trying to get your head around that. I hope walking you through that sort of made a little bit of sense. Um, just kind of take a good look at that and really try to grasp what's going on. And if you feel like it, if you want to really, you know, get a, a really good understanding, you could manipulate this a little, maybe just take out this L, see what it does, maybe move this around, maybe take this C out and move it over here, maybe put the end line up here, watch how things respond. So um, that's most likely what they're going to want. And then I put two spaces here because when we go to run the program, I'll show you that this is actually... With something this small, I think this is a much better way to do it. Uh, you've only got two variables, one for loop, if else, you know. So four rows equaling to one, and rows not exceeding five. You know, if it does not have a remainder, um, then print one star if it does. So the first one gets three, second one gets one. It's very simple. This one is a lot easier. The only problem with this way is if you have like a ton of columns and you really can't manipulate that. So let's let's run the program real fast. Let me show you how this works. See, so you get the same result. Okay. It, they both work the same exact way. We've got an E here. We've got an E here. Um, Let's uh, look at, you know, so this is this is definitely an easier way to code it. It's not what they're looking for, but let's say that I want to change the number of rows I have. So I can do 7 here. Let's run it. Huh, see, very easy. But let's say that I want to add, you know, I want to make the E longer. I want to make, you know, or just have lines going across, how would I do that? I would have to do something like this. Now that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to do that. And then to sit there and count them all and make sure I have the exact number I want. So with this problem, you know, I can I can manipulate how, that however I want. It's very easy. I can get the exact number of columns I want. I can get the exact number of rows I want. So you can see how in the long run this one is going to be a much better option. Uh, but this this is tempting. Um, I would definitely turn in oh uh, let's see what it's doing here. Okay. I would definitely turn in this right here. You don't have to include that. That's just to separate the two E's. But turn in, you know, something like this. Um, I hope this has kind of helped a little bit. Uh, and again, if there is a better solution and you can fit that all into one if statement, like I was saying before, try that. But this, uh, this was 
kind of difficult to me at least and um, after figuring it out hopefully this will help a lot of you guys um, I did a lot of searching for how to do this and I, it, it just nobody really had an answer for it um, at least not in C++ so I uh, hope this helps and thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video